kids. It's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. Uh, why don't you tell me a little more about this contest coming up, and then we can we switch can, gears can to whatever. Yeah, we could actually do that in the episode. Yeah, we we could tell you on the episode. That way, the people listening to the episode can also hear. Oh, sure. We'll do that. Kill two birds with one stone. I'm all about killing stones with birds. I mean, what? Just chucking a parrot at a stone. Yeah. Fuck you, stone. <laughs> John Stone killing Ale Sean <laughs> with Ail a Sean bird. A bird. <laughs> Where's Adam Rippin? He has a parrot. Chuck See? the parrot at Ale I Sean. I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, my Lord. What's up, everyone? This is the SML Podcast, episode number 204. Uh, I am joined, as usual, by usual, usual, I can't talk today, uh, by Chris Huber. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I fixed my car today. Nice. And how how does it feel knowing you are not the only Chris on the show today? Um, Confusing, but I'll get used to it. Nice, because joining us this episode... Christopher Maze Dude Getman. Maze Dude, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It was a crazy day, but I nailed it. So. What was crazy? What was crazy about it? What was what was crazy in your day today? Oh, hang on. Try to go on Twitch and I got an ad in my ears. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> ads? Stranger What's it things. for? What are we shilling? Stranger Things, a Netflix original that I don't want in my face right now don't even know what it is <laughs> the fuck netflix where's our chunk of that change uh that goes so, to twitch until we're until we're part partnered i'm pretty sure that's how that works i don't i don't know maybe one day our 51 subscribers don't care enough <laughs> we'll get there time will tell working on it working on it but yeah what, what, okay. what happened in your day today maze dude that is strange and crazy Oh, uh, I do websites for EarQ, and um, it's like hearing healthcare stuff, which is, you know, it's not a bad gig. I do, if I do my job well, I help people hear better, and then if they hear better, they can hear my music. So, there you go. Now, um, we're, we're adding an e-commerce <laughs> piece to uh, to our site, and it's just been like months of building and building and building, and we launch hopefully tomorrow. So, today was Debug City, which just sucks. That's like the worst city ever. Yeah, but the funny thing was this there. this giant project has been coming together at the exact same time as my album coming together, so it's like multiple launches all overlapping, which is just uh, fun but ridiculous. What what about this album? Why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> what an interesting segue. That was not my intention <laughs> at all. <laughs> an album, you say, with music? Are you a musician? <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you've probably seen the buzz on social and whatever, but um, American Pixels. It's been a uh, labor, labor of love for five years now. And it was ridiculous, actually, as I'm, as I'm uh, starting to plug it. I'm going back to my first emails that I shot people out about it where, like, when I first started it, and they're back from like 2011, and I'm ashamed that it's taken so long. <laughs> but regardless... Um, it is the sequel to the American album, which came out in 05, 06, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, it's just 10 years later. You know, I wanted to do it again. And there are requests from composers that came in at the end of the first one that I didn't get to. There were uh, new composers I want to honor. And this thing has really grown beyond me in a weird way because it's like, you know, the first one is I write the music, it's electronic, I release it. This one is, I'm writing the music, I'm bringing on guest performers, I am tackling really bizarre, obscure requests from the composers themselves, and nice. um, yeah, like some that were just 
just like really you want that one no one knows that song but okay hey hey you're the composer i'll i'll do it um and uh yeah so it's just it's you know multiple tracks multiple guest performers i'm fusing live instruments playing ridiculous solos over electronics which is a, a nightmare to mix and master but <laughs> kind of a fun challenge and uh honoring the games and the americans all at the same time so it's just a lot a lot of stuff so what if people aren't familiar with the first one what like what was thematically what what made you do the first one i'll tell you the story actually i was doing a lot of doom 2 mixes at the time because they were very popular and they kind of meshed with my style so um i was talking to mustin one day and i was like dude what if i do like you know an ep or an album that's kind of like maze dude versus robert prince you know like all the doom 2 stuff and it was actually his idea like okay well how about instead of that you add other composers to the list so it'll be kind of you know robert prince the american composer and then you also get jeremy sewell on there you also get the fat man on there and i was like oh you mean like an american album and that's how it started because it was just um every tribute album at the time was like you know mega man chrono trigger final fantasy japanese are you and, telling uh, me that there's final fantasy tribute albums i heard that there are i don't know if they're any good i don't believe you I think I'm on a couple, actually. I heard uh, there was a really good Earthbound one, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm on that one a few times. There's actually another Earthbound one coming out from the Bad Dudes, actually, pretty soon, which will be... Yeah, uh, I hear, which I am excited sweet. about. Yeah, I have a track on that, too, that uh, I managed to write while doing my own album. So that was uh, fun to weave in. But... Yeah, so the American album kind of grew from there, and it was like I became familiar with a lot of these composers who I wasn't super familiar with then and it just kind of became like a passion of mine because um it was just a really cool vehicle and it was also a way to uh you know just honor guys who weren't really given the tribute i mean this was before video games live this was before Bandcamp. so this was really before um there was that much exposure that you know came over the years i mean like now you got vert and big giant circles and all these guys with the crazy Bandcamp pages with all these albums but that didn't you know that didn't exist back then yeah, and it was just and video games live wasn't doing it what it, what it is now back then. So it was just um, what albums were available. So mine kind of changed that a little bit and did what I set up to do, and that was cool. But um, you know, even though the landscape has changed, I still wanted to do it again and then take it to a whole new level. So you're a pioneer, man. You're a pioneer. I actually I grabbed your American album off my shelf. To see if there was a date on it and there's not so i'm sad i couldn't <laughs> couldn't add that oh that's funny uh yeah the, well I, I did that art myself pretty poorly back then so <laughs> now you have but an actual you, um, artist i do randall drew is knocking it out of the park with uh, uh kind of a silhouette motif uh speaking of randall we, we he's a good friend of ours we know yeah. randall well indeed I love that you can um, kind of talk about what he does while saying his name. This is the artwork that Randall drew. Oh, <laughs> damn it. I'm sure that's been said a million times, but I wanted to say it again. Just like General Sounds uh, Chicken. It's a great line. It's like yeah. it was meant to be that he had to be an artist with a name like Randall Drew. That's kind of how I felt like when I was growing up, like because I grew up on Rock Street. So every, <laughs> so every, every time I would like... Uh, especially when I went to Guitar Center and they would just be like, all right, and, and what's your phone number so we can pull you up in the system? And I, and when I every time I would show up there, I'm like, yeah, my address is 2 Rock Street. And they're like, no, seriously, what's your address? And I'm like, yes, seriously, that's my address. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like It wasn't just Rock Street. It was 2 Rock Street. I, I like the comments in chat right now asking for a Prison Architect tribute album and a Rock Band tribute album. <laughs> well, a Rock... Wait, so... Do you, I'll do the Rock Band tribute album, and I'll have to cover the covers of the songs. <laughs> so, like, the, the modified versions of, like, find the ones that they really messed with and do those. It, w it would have to be a Rock Revolution tribute album. Because there's only, like, one, uh, one actual master song in there. Two of them. Something well, terrible. yeah, but if you go back to, like, the first, like, the first two Rock, or, yeah, it was the first first rock band primarily had some covers right like and then three. even like well yeah but the dlc too because like like what was it the 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 black sabbath ones weren't actually black sabbath i think total there were like maybe 10 covers 
total. I think there was a decent Guitar amount. Hero had a lot. If you but yeah, if you go back to Guitar Hero too, at least like the first two Guitar Heroes, there was a shit ton in those. But but well, clearly was, we're not focusing on Rock Band for the American album, are we? But here's what's funny though: some of the original tracks from Doom that I thought original, Robert Prince stole from Alice in Chains. So in a way, <laughs> I well, dude, if you go back. Rich. Even if you go back to to the first Doom and stuff like that, there's like there's Pantera riffs, there's Metallica riffs, Metallica, there's like yeah. yeah, like there's tons of stuff in there that is absolutely like lifted or at least like you know in the vein of some popular metal stuff. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, in a way, it's a remix of an arrangement. So you get that weird thing happening. Well, and not to mention the fact that technically my job is covering people's music like i'm in a top 40s cover band so like (laughs) people will pay other people to play like other people's versions of songs well in a way that's kind of why i enjoy remixing is that you kind of have like that jumping off point where you know i mean yeah there's the aspect of like you know instant fan base for people who like the game which is you know fun but i don't know I, i like when i create to like mess with the genres Give me a new sound. Oh yeah, a, a, a new fusion of you know, like I mean, Joe, Joe, how, how what was it that one crack I made that one time? I was like, dude, I'll do Caribbean death metal, and Joe challenged me to do it. No, it was uh, that, because it, it's what you did the comeback style in it. Yeah, Caribbean, yeah, yeah. Caribbean something with kazoo. Oh, Caribbean death metal with bagpipes? Is that what I said? I don't think it, was it, was, like, it wasn't death metal though. Right, but it was what what ended up happening was like 80s funk caribbean bagpipe kazoo harmonica like it was uh, ridiculous your <laughs> your cover of comeback was just insane like it what? i'm i actually i've been considering because we usually play a handful of songs from people at the end of the show i might toss come back <laughs> on there uh painful uh wasn't that fun, used yeah. in like some advertising not that one no but i i did create the uh instrumental version for fun though but no i don't think that one got used but a few of my tracks have but uh regardless i mean like that was the whole point of being able to make a wacky genre like that is because i had the melody to work with and i had like a oh, jump yeah. off point whereas if you were to just make that for fun and you could come up with a whole melody and everything it's kind of much harder to get anyone to care yeah um, absolutely and you really are no. the master of just creating weird genres you know, it shot me in the foot, though, when I tried to go, like, you know, work in the industry, because I went to L.A., you know, I do music for movies, and I I really wanted to, and I couldn't do conventional genres. I, 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 I tried to, like, wrapped up in, like, I'm going to fuck with this to the umph degree. Like. Yeah, it was like, you know, like, you know, okay, here's a little horror movie, and they, they, they play some, some cheesy movie soundtrack stuff that they got from some of their movie and said, right, let's write something that sounds like that. I'm like, and I want to, it's been done before, <laughs> you know, and I, I rebelled, my brain rebelled against that. And it, it hurt me to try and write that crap. So with the only film that I nailed was this short, low budget movie about a schizophrenic homicidal clown. And sounds that, interesting that I had fun with because <laughs> that was insane. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I took the da, 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 theme and just went insane with it. So that was. Uh, <laughs> I need to hear this soundtrack. Uh, I'll shoot you the MP3. I have it somewhere. The, the title was "Put on a Happy Face." Oh my god! Can we use that on the show too? Uh, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> We're just That's gonna weird. put like the craziest songs from you possible. You know, there's a lot of them. So sure. there <laughs> are. There, there was a stretch of like how many years that you didn't do the same genre in a mix like you would you would just do try as hard as you could to to not repeat a genre on the songs that well, you created and it wasn't so much like, like the effort like you know it was just like i get bored it's like yeah i've done that before there's happy I, face i found a I way think, file. Uh, i i i was actually contemplating doing something similar once i get uh i'm, I'm starting to consider getting complete um because my uh my guitar player actually has he he got complete 10 like the ultimate version of complete 10 and i guess when he got it there was some sort of deal that was going on that you got one of their new like modules the one of their interfaces uh like with all the touchpads and and all the controls and stuff that ties right into 
uh, reactor and all that stuff. So you essentially get that for free. And I was just like, oh, man, like it's, it's a lot. It's a big chunk of change. But that level of creativity and being able to have like any fucking sound that I could ever want ever at my fingertips. Like I, I feel like I can kind of mess around and do some really weird shit on that front, too. Like, do you do you ever feel limited by what you're able to record in some of the ideas that you have? Uh, yeah, but a lot of times it's, um, it, it, it makes you become resourceful. Because it's 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 that fine balancing act of you know what can I do with what I have, um, even though I have access to a lot of stuff, I still like you know I, I don't have everything, and the, there's sometimes you have an idea, and you got to modify it to fit what you can do, and sometimes that's a fun challenge, you know. So it's 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 a it's both. I mean, if you had every single sound you could imagine, it'd be too easy. So yeah, I mean yeah. That's, that's kind of like my personal thing. Like I, d- I don't even use like you know keyboards. Like I don't have like a nice lush Korg with hundreds of samples. I use a tracker, and I bring in samples that I made in SoundForge and that I took from other tracks. And like, you know, the, the quality is all over the place, which kind of gives me a fun edge where I deliberately mix eight bit, sixteen bit, old crappy sounds, nice new polished sounds, and. You know, I, I just I feel almost like it's cheating if you have like a nice fancy keyboard. You push one key and you hear the entire orchestra whoosh at your fingertips. <laughs> it's like too easy. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, because I, I, um, again, like but I've been getting a lot more of an appreciation of this because of my guitar player, and my bass player. They're both like uh, very theory driven, like um, like mechanical. Oh, I'm going to go from this to this to this to this. Um, where I don't have that much of a comprehension on theory, so I'm more going just by ear. But these guys, like, you know, th- uh, he has complete, and instead of just using a full orchestra sta- sound on each key, like, he'll individually do, like, here's cello one, here's cello two, here's, like, each, you know what I mean? And yeah, I that's can, cool. Uh, that's, it's, it it I all comes down to whatever tool you have. Front. Yeah, whatever yeah. tool you have, just are you, you know, do you have the craft to do it well? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I I think it's a really interesting, uh, like uh, just just the creative aspect of of trying to get the sounds that you're thinking of to application and and try and translate them well. Yeah, and with, with tracking, especially as it comes down to a lot of just attention to detail, like like just really chopping this note, sliding that note, bending this one to that one just right, and like you know just detail that just makes it shine you know and that took me years to kind of get that get that get that right you know yeah and by the way by the way joe i just sent you the put on a happy face uh mp3 fantastic so have, have fun with that is that on <laughs> skype or email uh i just sent it to your gmail okay cool so uh it's kind of just like a, a medley of a couple different themes and the volume jumps up and down and stuff but if you want to play it feel free i am excited i'm very excited it's always fun to have like exclusive songs that people haven't really heard before. I yeah. really have no clue how many people ever saw this film, too. So it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very now, few people have heard this. Well, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope the people that own the rights to that movie are ready to get ten more sales, <laughs> <laughs> or they might sue you for playing it because they pay. <laughs> or that too. Hey, That's- win-win situation, really. <laughs> sure. Those ten sales that we got them will cover the legal fees. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Take my YouTube penny? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Fuck you, buddy. You ain't taking my YouTube penny. That's nailed to my wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maze Dude, uh you have used a wide, wide variety of different instruments and samples over the years. Are there any instruments that you want to use that you're planning to use on American Pixels or something that you wish you could use? Uh, funny that you should ask that because there are a few in mind. And, um, you know, the the instruments that I've used on American Pixels currently, I mean, they, they vary from electric to acoustic to orchestral. Um, what I really want to tackle, which I never have um, in any like post, like not on, on the CD, but like following it is some of those other instruments like accordion, bandonian, harp, like instruments that you wouldn't normally picture as like, you know, this, the, like a feature solo performer, but like um, Danny Baranowski requested a Super Meat Boy remix when I talked to him about the American Pixels album years ago. And I have one in mind that would be a badass tango, but I 
didn't get around to writing it and i'm sorry danny it's not on the album but i still want to do it um, i was gonna i was gonna ask later uh if danny baronowski was gonna be one of the guys you were hoping to cover <laughs> You know, he is like one of like three or four that I contacted. They were excited, and then they just didn't make the cut. I didn't finish the track. You dick. So, you dick. <laughs> there are a couple of him, Chris Velasco, Clint Bajakian, and Michael Land, I think, were the list of guys who I was like, yeah, I'm honoring you, and then I didn't. So yeah. Bonus <laughs> tracks. Bonus tracks didn't. after the album, right? That's exactly, exactly. And some of them are already started, so. Nice. So, so how... Uh, how um. <laughs> What what is your what is your workflow normally like when it comes to just like your independent stuff? Like I'm assuming that you you said you, you uh, freelance for work. Uh, not anymore, actually. I used to. I used to. Um, I ran my own business for a while, where it was kind of like started off like all forms of multimedia, video editing, photography, graphics, music, sound, whatever, and then that kind of transitioned into web design as a full time job because that paid the bills, and everything else kind of didn't. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, I was freelance doing website work for back when Flash was popular, and then um, Flash died, and then I had to adapt and learn more languages, and then I actually got hired by uh, EarQ in Syracuse, and now I'm actually a full-time contract uh, salaried employee, which, um, you know, it's got pros and cons. I'm not home as much, but uh, my cat misses me. I'm sure you guys can relate <laughs> to that. Um, I'm, I'm sure Joe can relate. I don't have any cats anymore. Oh. <laughs> Although I do miss potatoes, so that's... that's Everyone that's misses potato. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm not freelance anymore. <laughs> uh, there, I kind of have the 9 to 5 day job i work my butt off i come home and then i come home when i switch to daddy mode where i start playing with my daughter and um you know just uh be a good dad be a fun dad and you know be there for my wife and the house and then i put isabel to bed and then um within the remaining time i have left at night or if i wake up early is me time for music and whatever else so it's been uh tough to find the time but actually i'll tell you the the trick that i did that actually you know i had a dry spell for a while there where most of the music here was written for this thing and then mm -hmm. i just i never got over that hump because what was happening was that i had this home office and i would go work all day in an office come home finally get a little bit of time to go do my own thing go downstairs and i'm back in a freaking office yeah it just sucked my energy away where i was like i don't want to be here i'm looking at whiteboards bulletin boards like Ugh. Yeah. so um a few months back actually with my wife's uh, encouragement we converted it into a man cave where we painted it dark we took down the bulletin boards we unscrewed the whiteboards we just took out everything that felt like work i hung up bad dudes posters album art um <laughs> All that stuff. See, you can see it in the video, in the Kickstarter video, actually. It starts off with me in my cave. Um, so uh, it, changing the environment made it so I wanted to be back here. I'd come home. I can't wait to get back to the cave. I can't wait to get back down there and, and you know create. And that really reinvigorated me. And that's when I wrote my Bad Dudes track. That's when I you know really got on fire to get the Kickstarter prepped by July 4th, which was a pretty ridiculous uh <laughs> deadline i gave myself to get the video done to get the previews done all that stuff so it's it's been uh, it's been fun getting back on that so uh, i hope that answered the question yeah i i, I mean, don't I remember just, the question <laughs> something about well, my I just, freelance work. I, I just yeah i mean i just I, I wanted to i was leading to where you uh delegate your time so you did answer the question so actually lately i've been um pushing myself to wake up crazy early which is really weird for me because I used to work like till the middle of the night. But um, I've been waking up at like 5 a.m. So I have an hour of me time. It's like when I, I go to bed. You know, I was doing that for years. I'd go to bed at four or five, six and work all night. I mean, the first American album, a lot of those tracks I wrote in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, you know, but things change. When you have a child that wakes up at 6 a.m., no matter yep. what, every day, Saturday, Sunday, holidays, doesn't matter. <laughs> you, uh, you change your schedule a bit. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You have to. I mean, like, how, how do you enjoy like having to put the dad hat on now? Like, well, it's 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 fun, and she's super cute, and she's a really, really happy kid. So that part's cool. Bedtime it takes forever. That's like the only beef I have because it's like you know, make her go potty, brush teeth, mouthwash, two books. You want your milk, and then we gotta. She has all these games she likes to play. Like you know, on the way to the bed, I'm gonna pretend this pillow is a monster, and then I'm gonna do this, and then it's like, okay, <laughs> it's cute. Just get to bed. 
So it's it's both. I mean, I really enjoy Saturdays that I have that are free where I can just go do something fun with her, like take her to the park, take her for a walk in the woods, take her to the playground, take her to the zoo, you know, just do the dad stuff. That Those days are great. I love that. It's so weird talking to friends on this show, just how everyone has grown over yeah over the years it's it's I'm, i've never been used to like maze dude being a dad or mustin being a dad or ale sean <laughs> being a dad yeah i mean my memories of you guys are still magfest one yeah is, i was gonna say that's when we first met yeah yeah first time i ever met maze dude was at magfest one sitting in the lobby of the hotel talking with mustin and you walked over and just started chatting with us. I'm like, oh my god, I loved River City Ramstein. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember one that. of his early song. Although it's funny though, I mean, the Ramstein homage. I, I just kind of did a Marilyn Manson homage with the uh, Ch- Tyrion remix. I don't know if you heard that on the Kickstarter page. If you scroll down, there's a free track. Oh god, That's, I have to check that out. Yeah, it's it's. I took the beautiful people, and I took the same style and applied it to alexander brandon's track from Tyrion, and i call it the beautiful spaceships <laughs> that's fantastic it just had the same kind of triplet feel da, 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 dun, da, 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 and i just that, that's all i needed so um yeah <laughs> oh man there i before uh chris changed the subject i was going to ask the, the whole discussion about weird instruments have you ever thought about using an automaton? Ah, uh, didn't you show me where somebody did that once? Yeah, Chris did it. I did. I, did. I just did <laughs> it again right. too. Uh, I had. I hadn't considered that actually. <laughs> I just. Yeah. I. I just did another one. It's almost like it's. I'm still working on it, but uh, it. <laughs> it's the. Um, it's from Shower with Your Dad Simulator 2015. <laughs> That sounds um, horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, it it's like eight bit, so it so it's not like you're seeing anything. It's <laughs> you know, but yeah, you just try and shower. You have to make sure that you're showering with the correct dad, um, as per your nationality. <laughs> um, so it's a, honestly, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, and it is. But the gameplay itself, it's kind of like it's arcadey and mindless and it's not that bad uh, we all bought them we all bought each other copies of the game uh like a, a small group of friends of mine we bought each other copies for uh a steam sale or like for christmas or something stupid like that we all gifted them to each other not knowing that we bought them like it just it just so happened that we all bought that game to give to everybody and it all happened all at once pretty much that's a um, so yeah i was trying to figure out like i'm gonna do I'm going to try and finish up a small EP of new stuff. And uh, uh, Tim it was just like, oh, you got to do another Automaton song. And I'm like, oh, but which <laughs> one do I do? And he's just like, dude, I know the game. And he just he, he, he sent me he sent me the uh, he sent me the song that he wanted to do. And I was just like, oh, my God, it's perfect. Uh, like it's it's coming out better than I thought it would. Like <laughs> like because the first one that I did, I did the uh, the shop theme from Castle Crashers, uh-huh. um, and all I did was I used it for the like the bass notes in the background. So it like or the just the little stabs. So I wasn't doing a very complex um, melody on them because trying to get accurate notes on this thing is <laughs> fucking <laughs> awful. Like so, um, so I'm like, you know what? No, I'm gonna push myself. I'm gonna try and see if I can get like as close as I can (laughs) to the notes that they're supposed to be. Um, And yeah, and I I got pretty damn close. So, so you're probably going through something I've been through many times where you, you struggle and you push all this effort into something at the end of the day, you're probably the only one who cares. Yeah. (laughs) When you listen to it, you're like, yeah, I know. And the funny thing is, is like, I, I like, so I took a picture of myself with the automaton, like in front of my condenser mic at like just sitting at my desk. And um, I, I, as I was like working on it, I would post in the comment section of it because everybody was just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Um, so I, I just posted a little snippet because it's just a little thing that loops. So like I just did the riff once with the automatones, which there was there ended up being like I did like six tracks because I broke <laughs> that into sections. 
and then there was like layers on top of it because I think there's like three or four of them going on at once. Um, oh my lord! Yeah. <laughs> so so that was that part took a little bit, and as soon as I finished that up, I posted it in the comments, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> like. I don't. I. I can't even comprehend what this sounds like. Like it's just. It's nonsense. What the fuck is happening in my ears? And then I was just like, wait, it's getting worse because I just added a guitar track on top of it. But then so, you have to point out that this was a lot of really hard work, dude. And <laughs> it took me hours. Yeah. Like, ah, like, uh, dude. And it's. And it's only like it was only like a twenty second thing, and and it took me hours. Oh like, yeah. No, I, I have tracks in uh, my album where like it was layers and layers and layers of like eight bit sounds that I try to make sound lush and rich and full and i would work for hours and realize i added five seconds to this track <laughs> <sighs> good lord yeah. but man they're they're five good seconds they're really tomorrow, good yeah tomorrow we'll add two more them over and over and over again <laughs> I, th- I think it might be time for maze dude to use an automaton on a song uh, i won't shy from the challenge <laughs> I, I, I tell you i tell you what man when you get it it's so satisfying like it's <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie. Like I had to do a shit ton of t- mine's still on my desk sitting in front of me because like yeah I'm I'm proud that I fucking I got that done. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it, it it's it, you get a really big sense of accomplishment when you can make something sound not that shitty when it is an obviously shitty instrument. <laughs> you know I used a Pepsi bottle in a song. I blew like over the the lid or the, what's the what do you call that hole? You know what I mean. Like kind of uh, using just like a flute almost. Yeah, like I, I, I sampled it. And I made like a pan of flute thing out of it. So yeah, you know, it's getting creative. What do you got? You know, make it work. Like Ale Sean doing all the percussion for one song on a can of Sparks. <laughs> that was brilliant. I love that track. The drugstore <laughs> sells Sparks. I love that one. It's just always fun when people go weird. Well, it's also to show you, like, you got to have fun with this. Every track can't be serious, you know, or or boring, you know? I mean, you got to go wacky. Yeah, that was specifically the whole reason why I did that on the first, uh, like, the first CD that I did. Because, like, all of them are, like, super metal, like, aggressive songs. And then right smack dab in Uh the middle, there's just this fucking automaton nonsense. Like, (laughs) uh, uh. (laughs) Just, just play something now, Chris. Bust out oh, the yeah, no, it's right in front of me. <laughs> Just for the people oh. who don't know what an automaton sounds like. There's three octaves. <clears throat> I'll start with the low. <laughs> All right. And then here's the medium. And then the high. Yes, no. that is now, that- a real instrument, people. So... D- now it's a touch strip, so you don't know where the fuck the notes are. Um, the uh, reaction of the touch strip is—it's not very responsive. <laughs> My finger was barely moving. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, the thing that is kind of neat is it, it does have override. Where like if you have a lower note held like this, um, and you go to switch to the higher note, it'll just completely negate the lower note. So you could do some pretty big jumps. Like it's, now play Thunderstruck. <laughs> I can't even move my fucking hand the way that it needs to move. Like this is just... God damn it. Like it's next next week on the show, Chris is going to be like, guess what? I learned how to play Thunderstruck on the automaton. I'm going to try and th- you know what? Just in spite of you, I'm going to try and add it to the end of the shower with your dad simulator one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna like try and shoehorn it right in the fucking middle. Like, <laughs> what? What is this thunderstruck? Like, what the hell is going? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty close. I, I'm, I'm gonna get it, you fucker. <laughs> I'm so glad that I created that. Yeah. 
So anyway, uh, American <laughs> Pixels, it is on Kickstarter right now. Tell us about the Kickstarter. It's my first time ever doing Kickstarter. So it's been an adventure. I've seen a lot of my friends do it with mixed success. Um, you know, I saw the Seventh Guest 3 go for Kickstarter and not do great. I saw big giant circles go for Kickstarter and blow it out of the park. So it's really hard to predict, you know? And um, I figured, you know, I'll do it this one to the best of my ability. And um, I talked to everyone beforehand, learned what worked for them, what didn't, and um, try to make a great video. Should give away a lot of free samples, you know, kind of figure them, just be generous, give as much as you can, explain it as best as I can, but try not to go too long, which is tricky because it's, it's a complex concept. So I can't really just do it super short either in the video or the write-up so but um yeah the first day so here's the thing i was I, I i knew i wanted to launch july 4th and everyone was telling me like oh it's patriotic and then they would pause and go wait a minute it's a holiday no one's gonna be online in a holiday and i was like <laughs> no, no, no think about it this way people won't be at work because it's a holiday there'll be enough people online so oh, uh Jack. it was it was a risk i launched it right at midnight on july 4th and then started getting the word out and spreading the buzz and everything. And then uh, by July 5th, I was at nearly $1,000, <laughs> which nice. was 20% of the overall goal. And I was like, this is amazing. If every day is like this, boom, every stretch goal, I'm going to be sitting pretty. <laughs> day two, a couple hundred dollars. Day three, maybe 50 bucks. So it slowed down. And it was just kind of like, aww, aww. Day one was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I've talked to people about this, though, and they say that's the trend. I mean, it's kind of like, um, oh, there it is. Yeah, so it's like, you know, the first few days, great. Last few days, great. Everywhere in the middle, eh, you try to get a few a day and just keep just keep pumping it. Keep spreading the word. Come and do great shows like this podcast. Like, uh, uh, great. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> Come having do fun. shows like this podcast. You're high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um you know just keep getting the word out i mean i am going to be trying to release regular updates uh more samples of the music more stories so people know why i did the tracks i did and how um they developed and everything so you know just going to keep uh, plugging the hell out of it this month you're probably going to get sick of seeing it and hearing it but uh the end result hopefully is to get you know funded obviously and get this thing done and regardless it's getting done even if i don't hit my goal i'll get it funded i just want to get it funded faster yeah and, um and also just and honestly i am just curious there's a tremendous curiosity i've been releasing these things for free for 15 years if i this one time say hey guys i could use some help i hate doing the whole give me your money thing but hey help me out this one time after years of free stuff will anyone care or is it going to be the internet where i gotta pay for something screw that i don't know so we'll see. And we're, we're just about the 50% mark after just over a week. So I'm very optimistic and it's going well. And um, I just want to see it pick back up. So, well, I, 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 I tell you what, man, like I, I felt weird. I felt weird charging people for my first CD because I was a nobody. Like it, it, there is that, like, I don't know. You almost feel guilty, but then, um, almost everybody that I talk to, they're like, no, like you're a musician. This is what you would do for work. It's not, it's not outlandish to want compensation. However, the way that you go about it will, will stick with people more. And what I ended up doing was just to pay what you want. So, yeah. and, and even just by doing that, I actually ended up making more than I thought I would because I was I probably would have sold it for cheaper for some people. Um, I think most people gave me about five to ten dollars for them, and dude, they were th burnt CDs in paper sleeves with a black and white paper insert. Like I, I remember, I picked one up at Megfest. But it was just like, I mean, like obviously, it, w it there wasn't a huge overhead. But if you're putting out something that at least is half decent, and people recognize that you put work into it, like it's not unreasonable to think that they'll compensate for uh, compensate you no, for it not at all and like you know i do have the the you know software and the abilities to release a lot of the stuff for free but the, the problem mm -hmm. is with this particular album is that i need professional engineers to come in mix and master and you know sound this make this sound great i want to make the artwork nice you know and just other things that just cost money and honestly there is a bucket list mentality where i just want this one time to have my own cd that is 
compressed in plastic that I can hold in my hand and be like, this is mine. You know, it's yeah. not something that's burnt. It's not something that's, you know, I'm a guest artist on a collection, but like, this is my project. And uh, is that selfish? Maybe, but who cares? Um, you know, it's something I wanted to do and I'm going to make it happen. And you're going I, I full wouldn't, legit I wouldn't with fully as- licensed and everything. Yeah, licensed, you know, I'm, I'm working with the guys at Louder to make sure that this thing is, you know, above board and legit and everyone mm-hmm. gets paid properly, that after the CD is released, you know, proper, um, you know, payments are given in that regard, that it's properly uh, tracked and everything as it's streamed wherever it goes. I'm going to get it on iTunes, Amazon, and, you know, regardless of how the Kickstarter does, once this is done and it's out there, there's that whole passive income angle too, which is just kind yeah. of like, you know, a year later, someone buys it. Hey, I get you know, a few bucks keep that going you know and just see see what happens yeah ideally you know get enough interest where this kind of uh, fusion where i'm bringing on live performers mixing with hardcore electronics um becomes something where people want and i can do more of it speaking of the live performers uh tell us about some of the guest musicians you're going to have on the the album well i got i brought on a lot of good friends and um you know here's the thing I'm, i'm a you know, musician as well. I grew up in band. I, I played trombone. You know, I was a band geek, and um, you know, I would play these solos for different contests and whatever else. And it was kind of like, either you're playing a very challenging solo completely just by yourself, or you have a piano, or if there are any that have like electronic accompaniment, they're all crazy like avant-garde, weird, minimalist, whatever. There aren't great options for someone who wants to play their instrument, but play something upbeat kick-ass video gamey you know <laughs> with, with you know something that's fun and, and also challenging what you do find a lot in the scene is you know even if there's a live performer it's more pretty and beautiful like you find a, a flute performer playing this really sweet flute track but it's easy and you know there's no offense to anyone who, who does that but it was just kind of like well what if i can merge those worlds write a track that is challenging difficult virtuoso write the sheet music and put it with video game music and put it with the electronics all that stuff all at once but to do so you, <laughs> you need some really talented people because I'm, I'm writing stuff that's like you know i wrote a marimba piece where you need four mallets at once crazy crap like that where it's like you need someone who knows what they're doing good lord um, yeah so uh there were uh times where you know i'm just thinking like well even before i write who do i want to bring on who who has got the chops to do this and uh a lot of the names are familiar a lot of the bad dudes lended their skills dishu came on to play piano for the dragonborn concerto which is uh, great to have him um you know he's a phenomenal performer and um i just i knew he'd it'd be up for it uh let's see zyko comes on does his thing and i deliberately wrote a track that i put a lot of like open space in just to let zyko be zyko and just meander and wander with his guitar and just God. do his thing <clears throat> um someone's commenting about four mallets yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> muster uh, grip all the way um what else was I'm, a, I'm assuming because their name is xylo freak they play a xylophone you would think so possibly i hope so i'm just i mean i'm they just going out gonna be really let here. down yeah but uh kunal, Ma- kunal majmadar comes on and plays keys Never i got heard uh, of him. El- El- <laughs> El- Shran playing guitar but i also brought on uh electric bass i don't know if you've ever heard solo electric bass but it is a haunting sound um when you get really high and like you know just play leads and stuff on electric bass like it is a trippy haunting sound that uh i wanted to do a track for so i brought on a great local musician matt vicante of this um jazz band called esp and his wife played marimba so i brought her on to be the marimba player um you know so that's nepotism Uh, but uh, you know, it's I, I got the sheet music, I got the solos written, and the hope is that you know maybe once this gets out there, other people will want to play that too. Like you know, in uh, college, for example, you know these up and coming talented musicians, they need to put on concerts. Well, what if they want to play one of these in their concert? It would be very different from every other thing in the set. You know, that's kind of what I want to provide is the, that option to play a video game track at your recital. And guess what? It's challenging, and it's really impressive when you play it right, and that kind of stuff. I have a trombone solo on here that I brought in one of my college friends, uh, David White. 
you know, it's people ask me why didn't I play trombone if I wrote trombone solo? I'm like, I'm rusty. I don't play anymore. <laughs> this guy, I, I sat next to him in orchestra, and he is still playing, and he is writing his own music, and it is freaking amazing. I'm bringing him on, and he was happy to do it. So yeah, it's it's just a it's a big old mix of you know not just bringing on buddies because. Uh, you know, it's I'm forming a band or anything, but it's like every guest performer, they're the only one on that track. And they are just shining and just rocking it. Yeah, I, I actually liked um I like the the philosophy of if you're gonna have somebody guest like they're the only guest. Yeah. Like I, I, I always kinda get like I get kind of bummed out when there's like multiple guests because it's like, man, it's you're you're taking it away from each individual person. Like it's I don't know. To make an Maybe analogy, they're like, like putting together a movie like The Expendables, where all these great fighters come in and don't fight. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Because nobody wants to step on each other, so everybody just like does what you know what would be best for the song, as opposed to being like, "Fuck it, I'm going to go be an idiot." Like, <laughs> I love, I, like, I love hearing solo guitar players just like, just finger vomit, like, I, like. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it didn't no, for real because like uh, i know exactly what you mean but i also never heard that term <laughs> well it is it's like it's like tourette's almost they just fucking <laughs> like they don't they don't necessarily know what notes they're playing at a certain point because it just becomes a jarbled mess um but for some reason like i love when guitar players are like hey man i'm gonna i'm gonna show you what i got and it's just nonsense like <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. and there like is it. room for that on this album too. Actually, there's uh, spots where Kunal and Zyko do that pretty darn well, and uh, even David White. I gave him a big solo section, and it's just going to be wacky jazz trombone going crazy. That's like uh, Ale Sean solo on your album, Chris. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I told him. I'm like, dude, just be an idiot. Just do like, just like have fun, and and if you get if you get really stuck on a riff or something like that don't be afraid to repeat it for the rest of the solo like <laughs> like, like, yeah, like he he went nut like i've never yeah. heard sean do such an insane solo before dude and, and i i told him i'm like here man you could just like you could start here and whenever you feel like stopping you can stop he's like all right sure and he sent me a solo that went past the rest of the song <laughs> So I just did a, so I just did a gradual fade out because I'm like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, that's why we have fade outs, Joe. <laughs> Should have extended it. Fade outs suck. Hate fade outs. I like fade outs. Amazed, dude. How many fade outs <laughs> are on your album? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not many, not many. One or one or two, maybe, but mostly. See? No. As long as you don't, as long as you don't overuse it, it can be a very great tool. Yeah, but I, I thought of- yours shouldn't have faded out. It just it it sucked to the life out of it. I'm like, no, I don't want it to end. I have a fade out at the end of my Bioshock 2 remix where I have a chip lead doing this weird ass solo at the end, and the notes kept getting more wrong and more wrong as it fades out. So if you listen carefully. <laughs> It starts to sound just less pretty as it gets quieter and quieter. But I, I almost went back and rewrote it to sound good. And I was like, "No, what? No, that's the fade out. This is where you put the crap. Put it in the fade out. <laughs> this is yeah, where you put exactly. the crap. Exactly. You just so you're I, just like either either people are gonna want to listen in because all right. So I don't know if I'm the only person that did this, but every single time there was an album that had a fade out, I would sit on the on the volume dial and make sure that I wrote it all the way out until I heard every <laughs> little bit that was there because I wanted to know if it was a it was a fade out so that you can get a, a crazier impression of the good stuff that's happening or just be like wow that's hysterical because that's awful <laughs> I never there's did that two, but yeah sure cause like, yeah. Uh, there's so many albums where I'm like is it going to be good or bad is it going to be good or bad and then it's just like oh this is a bad one that was great ha, ha, ha. and then you just go to the next level like holy fuck that guy's just oh he's just, he's still going oh my god he's still going <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's it, it it's a completely different type of mindset depending on how you use it and I wanted to get across that that he was having this ridiculously insane solo so I wanted to do the fade out to almost like impact it more like uh, and and I don't know if I'm the only person that 
ever gets that that type of sensation with a fade out if it's a good fade out but that was my mentality going into it so are you turning the volume up 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 as it fades out and then the next song yes. comes in it blows your ears off yes. Ah, turn it back down. <laughs> yes you have to you have to know when to you have to know when to turn it back that's why chris is partially deaf and no it can't be that i'm a drummer <laughs> not at all no. Oh, no, I work for a company called EarQ. Check it out. We can help you with your hearing. Uh, I actually have been looking into. I want. I want to get better in ear monitors because I'm just using like the the universal fit mold things. Mm-hmm. I, I think I want to do the actual like legitimate Custom. mold. Yeah, I can help you with that. We got contacts all around, across the country. I am near. I'm like 15 minutes outside of Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I will check and see who we have there. Cool. I know some in Pittsburgh. I know some folks um, towards Mount Joy in Lebanon. Let's see where else. Pittsburgh, I'll, I'll check. I'll see what I can find. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, dude, there's so many different companies that do in-ears at this point. Like, I just, it's kind of difficult to figure out where to go for them. Fender's okay. making in-ear monitors now. Well, Apple's trying to make hearing aids, so like, wacky. It's too many, too many options, too many things. Yeah. So uh, we've been talking for an hour already. Wow. Yeah. Have we? Is, is, Damn. Is there like a time limit on this? Do I need to get off so I can play your music or do your reviews or whatever? No, we don't have a time limit. Well, I mean, we normally go for about an hour. For interviews, yeah, normally. But yeah. really, we. I mean, don't forget, like, a chunk of that wasn't recording. Oh, oh that's yeah, that's true. So, yeah, well. Um,. And technically, if you wanted to sit in for the news and other stuff, it's not like you can't. Yeah, if, it's if just you're allowed to hang out as long you. as you want. Yeah. You're Maze Dude. You can do whatever the fuck you want. That is true. <laughs> you could do true. a backflip on our show if you wanted. <laughs> and everybody would see it. Probably. I actually, re- I actually recently just got my backflip back after my knee surgery, so that's exciting. A few months ago, I landed the first one standing that I've done in uh, years since I tore my ACL. Damn. So that's, yeah, no, I, I went through two years where I couldn't really do any tricks or anything because it uh, blew my knee out. So, yeah, like you said earlier, getting older, you know? Yeah. I'm on the part. I, I currently have a hernia and I'm still playing like four gigs a week. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> like, trust me, I understand. <laughs> yep. I, I will like, always remember the early MAGFest days where you and Tosser would have, like, flip-offs. Yeah, well, the one-ups live. We did our best one. So fun. That like, was. During the performance, instead of a dance circle, it was a flip circle. <laughs> <laughs> and we both had very different styles, too, which made it a lot of fun. But yeah, I still do that stuff a little bit on the side. But uh, yeah. Well, did I tell you what? I'm going to plow. What is this person sharing? <laughs> it's a picture of you. <laughs> Mag- Magfest 7, I think. Is yes. Ian. Ah. Yeah, that's Ian in chat. Indeed. That's Jesus. Ian, Jesus, Ian. I believe he was there as well. Of course, Lumberjacks, you guys are always there. Indeed. So. Cool. We'll tell you what. I might hop at, hop back in in a minute, but I'll let you guys carry on with your reviews and music and whatnot. I'm going to go check on my wife who just came home. And uh, uh, my last plug for American Pixels is I have a forwarding address on AmericanPixels.com. It's very easy to find. So go, give me your money. I mean, check out the music. <laughs> well, you got, you got <laughs> thirty-two bucks from me. So hey, hey, every little bit is appreciated. You know, seriously, it's it's you know, it's a labor of love. I just want to get it done. But I want to get it done right, you know. I and had just to be a, a part of it. Add to. And we were we are just about at the fifty percent mark. So, you know, if you guys hop on quickly, you can be the the one who hits that fifty percent mark, and I'll say thank you. Indeed, jump <laughs> on there. Twenty three days to go. You were aiming for five thousand dollars. You were at twenty three sixty seven. Exactly. So let's go, people. Jump on and back this album. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it good. As Cat's claw up my leg. That hurts a lot. Okay, well, leave it to your cats. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back in a few. But you guys carry on. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for Thanks. joining us, and uh, for we'll me. we'll weave you back into the conversation when you return. Sounds good. Thanks. Cool beans. Right. So, right, uh, 
Might as well just jump into the news. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, well, do you want to do reviews or news first? I, or emails? Do we have emails? I don't think we have any non-contest related. Uh, well, I will open it up and check. Which, by the way... Oh, God. May, you, May's dude was going to ask about it. Well, we'll mention the contest when he comes back. Okay. Well, um... For those of you that don't know, while you're checking the email, I'll, I'll segue. Uh, you can email us at the SML podcast at gmail.com. It does not have to be contest related, but it can be, um, which we will talk about our contest that we're having right now momentarily. But you can just ask us, you know, if there's something going on in the gaming community or in tech world or what have you that you want us to discuss. Just email us. Let us know. It doesn't have to be for a contest. Yes, just be a part of our show. We like talking to people. Or you can hop into you. our, you can hop into our Twitch ch- uh, Twitch chat um, when we record the shows live, um, and you can bother us in there. Indeed, and maybe if we have a guest who's using a camera, you'll get to see my kittens. Yeah, I mean, I, actually, I'll, I'll do a I'll do a quick little plug as well. I finally got some of my stuff that I'm going to need for my stream. I'm going to give it a shot again tonight. Do you want to switch to video and show off? Uh, not yet, because I don't have the other light set up currently. Ah. Um, yeah. But I'm going to be updating my processor soon, so I'll actually be able to do the level of streaming that I'm going to want to do. For now, I'm going to attempt to just do like some uh, music editing stuff which I'm going to have that be a part of the channel anyway. But uh, that shouldn't be as taxing on my computer, hopefully. We'll find out the hard way tonight. But Nice. We'll have to yeah. check that out. And, and where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, I believe I should be Kroth, K-R-O-T-H-1134. Should at least know your own goddamn Twitch handle. <laughs> it is. It's Kroth, K-R-O-T-H-1134. All right, so do you want to do reviews or news? Uh, that's completely up to you, my friend. I, I guess I'll ask you, do you want to talk or do you want to listen? <laughs> uh, I can listen. All right, then we will dive headfirst into the reviews of the week. First game, I am stupidly, stupidly excited about this one. Song of the Deep. Developed by Insomniac Games, published by Game Trust, aka GameStop. Yes, this was their very first game that they have published. Uh, it released July 12th for $14.99 on digital and for the standard physical edition. Uh, physical edition only available at GameStop since they're the publishers here. They also have a collector's edition available for only $29.99 that includes the game a special edition of the book because there's an actual book to the game with like pages and words that you can read (laughs) Uh, things stickers, a steel book and a soundtrack download. And I don't know if all copies are like this or if, or if they messed up with my copy, but when I put the, the soundtrack download in, it was a steam code and it gave me the game as well. (laughs) Uh, that's awesome. So I also have the game on Steam now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the game follows the story of a young girl whose dad was a sailor and he would go out during the day, go do fishing and return at night. And he just didn't return. And she, after waiting for days, she decides that she's going to build a submarine and look for him. And it follows her exploration of the ocean, the ocean floor. And it is, uh, first off, the game is gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful. Second off, it is incredibly fun. It is a Metroidvania style game, which is always fun to play. And it is just, there is just so much to explore, so much to do. And it's, it's not just all combat. There's tons of puzzles in there that you're going to have to work out. Uh, they say that the the game could ha- hover around like a six hour playtime. I think I've put in over six hours so far, and I'm not done with the story. 
So it's, yeah, but you're uh, you're. To be fair, you are a completionist. So I am, especially in Metroidvania style games where I'm like, oh, I have this ability. I can go back and do this now. Right. So Yay! so mileage may vary because Joe likes to take his time, which there's nothing wrong with. So just yep. be aware with, of that. With a game that looks and plays this good, you're going to want to spend the time to explore. As it should be. It's all it's all under sea, and it is oh it's so beautiful. The music is incredible. The voice acting is great. Imagine that, a, a game with good voice acting. Then again, it's Insomniac Games, so you're almost guaranteed a quality product. Almost. Don't let, don't let the whole GameStop thing throw you off. They're basically just the ones who are publishing the game. They, The game itself is just, damn, it is good. I think this, this is going to be talked about this year like Ori and the Blind Force was talked about last year. Wow, that is that's a bold statement. It is a what? very bold statement, and I am going to stand behind it. Okay, well, let me ask you this from an outsider's perspective, without having played the game, okay. and just just on a sales point of view, and your uh, your view as a uh, as a consumer. Okay, do you do you feel more comfortable about GameStop releasing games now that they've released one that's not doo doo? Like if- the first. Like this is their first. This is their first one, right? Yes. This yeah. is the first so, game that they're releasing through their Game Trust publishing label. If they have the same involvement that they had with this game that they do with other games, which is basically they stay the fuck out of the actual creation of the game and they just publish and sell the thing, I'm fine with it. I didn't have a problem with it to begin with, really. I thought it was kind of strange that they were doing it, but I can understand why they did it. But if if they just let the developers make fantastic games, that I don't think something like this would have come along if it weren't for GameStop. If you don't they, think they would try and self-publish or like find someone else? I I don't think it was probably just a GameStop coming along like, hey, have you guys had any kind of ideas that you'd want to see happen with the game? They're like, well, we had this idea for a tiny little downloadable game, and they're like, we'll fund it. Let's make it happen. I think I think they just kind of went out on a limb and did something unique and different because they had the opportunity to do so. And I think if, if that offer wasn't there, it might not have happened. Okay. All right. I mean, like, yeah, it, it's true. I mean, I, I I see where you're saying. So, yeah, as I long mean, as, as long just, as the games are as good as this one, GameStop could do what the hell they want. I'm really. cool with it. Fine with it. Someone was like, "Oh, it's bullshit." The GameStop is the the only place selling the game. They're publishing the game. I think they earned this one. Oh, at fucking absolutely. <laughs> This isn't like a normal store exclusive thing. Like they fronted the money for this game. Yeah, I don't have a problem with them having an exclusive on this. The the yep. game, needless to say, it is an absolute buy it. This is I honestly believe this is going to be talked about with uh either game of the year or digital game of the year conversation. It's it's just a fantastic game. Cool. Good to hear. I'm glad that I'm glad that GameStop actually like, you know, put some effort into something that's a positive for the gaming computer community. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm cool Ashley Ashley's actually giving me dirty looks because when we picked up the game, the guys like, "Oh, have you heard anything good about the game yet?" I'm like, "I've been playing it all weekend. It's it's just fantastic." And Ashley just gave me a dirty look like, "This is the one you've been playing all weekend? Why are we buying it?" Yeah, right. Because they deserve the money. I bought the collector's edition. I don't regret it. It is. It's just an amazing game. Cool. That's good to hear. So what's, buy it. what's next? Next up is the incredible adventures of Van Helsing developed and published by Neocore games released July 1st for 1499. You will remember the first game was a game with games with gold title. You remember mm-hmm. those days? Yes. And, uh, there is DLC for the second game. It is not like the first game, where in the first game, the DLC were two different character classes. It is mm-hmm. not like that this time around. 
This time, the DLC, they have an armor set for a buck and a little mini pet for a buck. So, no problems there. Okay. So they, you were not missing out on any character classes. This game, if you've played the first one, you are going to know exactly what you're getting into. This is an absolute direct sequel that picks up right at the end of the first game to the point where you can import your character into the new game if you've beaten the first one. Cool. So, and so almost champions, champions of Norothy. I wish I played the... Well, had I known that you never played it, then I would have obviously tried the copy that I had in your PlayStation when I lived with you. <laughs> I think we went over that a few times. I, I don't remember. I don't remember you saying that you never played it. Yeah, never played them. But it very similar game. If if you've played the first one, it is like it's a top down hack and slash uh, with some guns. If you want, you are the the monster hunter Van Helsing. Uh, At the end of the first game, I don't really remember all of the story of the first game because it's been a while. You were basically trying to overthrow like a a corrupt government. Uh, And this time around, it's like in the middle of the war. The game starts up and it's it feels more like a tower defense where you are managing a siege on your city. And if you want, you can like micromanage what you want to do and talk to all the different uh generals and whatnot or you can just be like hey you're a general you handle all the planning i'm just gonna kill shit because i just like killing shit it's fair (laughs) uh yeah let's be honest it's a hack and slash you want to hack and slash like indeed it it does seem like uh some of the areas are a bit more linear than in the first game like the the first van helsing it seemed like there were giant wide open areas where this seems to have more constrained, like, maze-like corridors. So there there are some offshoots. It just seems more streamlined and to the point. Okay. Which, it's it's a good or a bad thing, depending on uh, on. I was just about to ask, is it. it good or bad? <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of the game. I have run into some technical issues. The game has frozen up on me, like, four times already. Well, like hard great. lock, the game freezes and just crashes to the dashboard. And thankfully, it pretty much constantly is saving your progress. I didn't really lose much progress on it, but it is a nuisance because just like the first game, there are some some brutal load times in there going between areas. It's slightly improved from the first game, but it's it's still kind of rough with the load time. That's unfortunate. Gameplay wise, though, if you've played the first one, if you've played stuff like Diablo or Champions of Norath, you know what you're getting. It's it's just like that. Top down, hack and slash. There's some guns in there. There's some spells in there. Uh, you're probably going to die if you don't build your character properly. Like I'm mainly focused on uh, up close melee stuff. In in the one chapter, there were like a bunch of ranged enemies that would just chipped away at you like a motherfucker (laughs) so you you want to make sure that you don't just go all one route and kind of like try to build up a a well-rounded character uh all three of the the classes are available from the start unlike the first game where you had to buy them you can pick any of the three what were they uh hermitage hunter and like arcane warrior i don't remember i'm just a hunter like the game but overall awesome game a lot of fun the dlc i actually picked up because why not the the little mini pet for a dollar is neat because it'll just like it gives you a slight boost to like your gold and magic find plus he'll randomly drop money ah and then so, the the armor set like is most, for level like 30 so i don't know pets in games yeah that's how they like to work them in Hey, Maze Dude's back. What game are we talking about? No, we are talking uh, about The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing 2. Ah, I haven't played it, but I will listen. It is good stuff. I, I was just about to give it a buy it rating on our scale of buy it, try it, deny it. Well, then it makes it the best ra- ranking it can get. <laughs> Indeed, it's a really good stuff, enjoyable game. Uh, 
Chris, did you want to talk about the the contest now that Maze Dude is back? Um, we could finish the rest of the reviews first. Because there are a chunk of them. <laughs> well, what? We got one, two, three, four, five, six? Six more, yep. That's uh, up to you. How about we, we do uh, one or two more, and then we'll we'll take a break from reviews and sure. do others. Yeah, let's do that. To give my, my throat a bit of a rest. Yeah. Uh, next game is called Anarchute. Developed and published by Anar Team. Released July 12th for $14.99. This uh, is adorable as fuck. It is. It is absolutely ridiculously cute. Where there is... You, you play a series of adorable animals who have to adorably team up for an adorable riot. Oh my god, this looks amazing. <laughs> it pretty much is amazing. Dude, this is... Oh my gosh. This is really fucking adorable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the game plays a lot. It, it has a lot in common with... Uh, with uh, Katamari games, where you start with just a handful of animals, and you go around the stages, picking up more animals that are in groups, or they might be locked up in cages, and you have to break them free, you have to take out the the enemies and the cops and the guards and everything else, and you have to reclaim the cities, town by town by town, map by map, and it is it is just ridiculous where you're a swarm of like 40, 50 cute little adorable animals attacking a swarm of police officers. <laughs> That's a hyster- dude, this is oh my gosh. This is really hysterical. Yeah, this words looks so cool. Like words cannot properly uh qualify or describe this game. Uh Ian, the game is called Anarchute. Like anarchy, but cute. Is cute anarchy? Anarchute. Yeah, Yo, it this is. Looks so awesome! Like it is. It is so ridiculously fun. Uh, of course, each stage based on how quick you do it, how many cops you take out, and how many uh, how many people are in your mob at the end. You'll get letter ratings, and the goal is obviously to get S rankings on everything. Uh, there are, God, five or six different cities that you have to reclaim, and each one has, you know, like five to seven different stages, so bonus areas to do, cut scenes. There are dozens of different animals to unlock, costumes that you can unlock. Uh, you can buy upgrades that, depending on the size of your mob, you can get special abilities or. Like, you could walk faster, or if you're throwing stuff, you'll like refill your your ammo, like unlimited throwables. It's it's just ridiculously goofy and fun, but it does get more difficult clearly as you go on. Of course, but you just you have to be smarter about how you're playing. Not that the the levels are impossible; they're just more complex and require more planning and patience to do instead of just running in and mashing the attack button and taking out the cops right away. because they'll they fight back and you will lose animals and there are only a set number of animals in each level so if you lose too many you kind of fuck yourself over this is really cool i actually i'm i'm, I'm gonna add this onto my wish list <laughs> But yeah, the game is out now for fifteen bucks. I'm I'm giving it another buy. It it is hilariously adorable. Yeah, that's a good one. It's it's just a blast to watch. A blast. I I think I'm going to end up watching a lot of people play this on Twitch. Yeah, I could see that because it's just so goofy. Yeah, this would be a good one to watch. All right, I agree. Uh, next game to talk about until we take a break is called Cube. You might remember that we talked to the folks from Ninja Egg a couple of episodes ago, what, like a month or so ago, something like that. Uh, it might have been more than that. Well, good news. The game is finally out this week, released July 13th for $19.99. Although if you pre-order it, you can get it for $14.99. Uh, 
Uh, they described the game quite a bit when they were on, where it's basically, it is a cube-rolling puzzle game, but instead of something like uh, Cubot or the hell were the other cube-style puzzle games that we've covered? Um... I, God, I don't you, remember names of that you, stuff. People are, instead of just being like a puzzle game, like just solve a puzzle, you are actually going through stages. It is a platformer cube rolling puzzle game. If that makes sense. If not, go back and listen to our episode. Makes sense. Uh, finally have our hands on the full game. The game, as they described with the $20 price tag, it is massive. There are... I think 80 stages in the game, something ridiculous like that. Oh, there is absolute hours upon hours of gameplay. Uh, you, you have clearly want to go for gold medals for time and deaths on every stage, which usually means don't die on the stage. You want to get the hidden star collectibles in stages. Some of them you're going to have to, to really look for and figure out the game is, it's just awesome. I know some people might be turned off by the $20 price tag and worry about the longevity for the price. There is absolutely a $20 worth of content in this game for how much is there and how big the game is. Uh, For the $15 pre-order price, it's absolute buy it. You should have already pre-ordered it. It's good stuff. Uh... If you're if you're not so sure on spending the twenty bucks, watch some people play it. But for fifteen bucks pre order, absolutely. For twenty bucks, watch someone and see if it's for you. That's fair. Makes sense to me. Yeah, there's there's four uh, four reviews, and we'll do four more later. Yeah, but before then, we'll talk about the uh, the contest that's almost over. It's, yes, it's there, very, there is very less close. than a week left. Next week, when we record this show, we will be discussing the entries and picking a winner. Next week on the show. It is happening. It's happening. It is happening. Take that picture that you see on Reddit all the time of, it's happening, it's with happening. the flashing background. Yep. Uh, we, so, Maze Dude, if you're still there. I'm around. <laughs> you, we're gonna go. We're gonna go over the contest. Pay attention. I'm you listening. Can, you, you can. You can hear what you could possibly win. Yes, uh, you had questions about the contest, didn't you? Uh, I was just kind of curious for what am I winning? What would I be entering? Well, we will run down the contest one more time since this is the last opportunity to do so. Seems fair. Way way back. In the early days of our show, we were known as the Small, Medium, Large podcast. Hence the name. About 20 episodes in, that changed to the Someone Might Listen podcast, keeping with the SML theme. Now that we're over 200 episodes in, and we know that people are listening to the show, it's time to change up what the SML stands for. So that is where our listeners come into play. Ah. They have to email us at the SML podcast at gmail.com what they think the SML should stand for. Uh, I know the first time around that we did this, we got a bunch of really ridiculously stupid ones, which are funny and enjoyable and hilarious to, to read and check out. Uh, but we eventually went with someone might listen because it was fitting for a gaming podcast that didn't have many listeners. So now we we're want- trying to find something that's more fitting. While we obviously are going to get a chuckle at some of the funny ones, we are trying to look for something that we could legitimately use. Yes. So if people are allowed to send in as many entries as they want, keep in mind that the more you send us, you know, if you have five gems out of 25 entries, it might not be as good as having just five really good entries. Is we we have to wade through the shit to get to the good stuff. True. So keep that in mind when you're sending your entries in. That just because you can send in as many as you want doesn't mean that it'll help you. 
Got it. Truth. I actually won a similar contest in college. Uh, there were three dorm buildings, and they all had quirky names. There was the big house, there was the far side, and then there was crossroads. And they were building a fourth building. And it was kind of like completing the square, but it was like slightly farther away from the others. And they had a contest to see who could name the building. And if you won, you got 100 bucks. And I won. I named it the Outback. Because it was like, it was because they're all quirky names, two syllables. And this one was kind of like in the square, but kind of farther back. It was like out back. So I'm like, well, there you go. So um, I have experience with such a contest. Well, good thing for you you, is there's still time to enter. There's still time to enter. And there is a ridiculous amount of things that you could win. Ridiculous. An absolutely absurd amount of prizes. First I off, saw on Facebook, a thousand dollars worth when you put it all together. Way more, uh, more than a thousand. I I just haven't updated the tally in a while. But yes, the <laughs> the prize package is digital only is worth over a thousand dollars. Games covering Xbox One, PS4, Steam. Uh, there's even a PSP slash Vita game. We even have a Wii U and a 3DS game in there. There, there are dozens of games from companies like Loot Interactive, Harmonix, uh, Gaijin Works, Upfall Studios, Matrified Games, uh, Jaywalkers Interactive, Metalhead Software. Just, there are nearly 50 different companies who have sent in games and codes for us to give out. And the grand prize winner gets it all. We have a couple of duplicate codes that we're going to give out for a, a mini <laughs> second place package, but they're all duplicates. It's not like you're getting anything. You're not missing out on anything as the grand prize winner. You are getting everything. Duplicates will go to the second Sweet. place as well as we'll have a handful of other assorted Honorable codes. That, yeah. yeah. Just give out randomly to other people. Plus we have music prizes digital again, from Inverse Phase, The Spin Wires, Bob Baffy, Stemage, Metroid Metal, and that doesn't even include the physical goodies, which we, we covered before. Our first really, really cool entry or uh, prize for the physical package was uh, a hat from Metalhead Software for the sirloins from Super Mega Baseball. And they did not make many That's of these hats. That's a nice-ass hat. You they always didn't. get the r- most random physical stuff from games and franchises that I've ever seen. It's bizarre. <laughs> like, why do they make a figurine of that? Oh, Joe has it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, while I was in Illinois, we got a copy of Lonely Rolling Stars Carnivortex CD <laughs> to include right. in. We got a CD from Austin Green, who released an album under WASD to be included as well. Uh, we're going to have plenty of different goodies and swag from me that I'm just going to fill up the box with, because clearly that's going to happen. And then, of course, the the really, really big cool prize that was just added last week, we have a custom-made, 3D-printed Pip-Boy replica from Fallout. <laughs> Friend of the show, John Peters, who actually won our contest on episode 25 way back when. He does 3D printing stuff. He sells them at MAGFest. So if you were at MAGFest, chances are you saw him there in the, the vendor room. He normally sells these things for over 100 bucks, and he sent one to be included. As well as a bunch of bottle caps for Nuka-Cola and uh, <laughs> Sunset Sarsaparilla. That is awesome. So there is a shitload of stuff. There's a lot shitload. of stuff. There's a lot Shit. of stuff. Oh. Oh, and, b- by the way, one of my favorite prizes, since we didn't mention it specifically, uh, $200 worth of DLC for Rock Band. What? what? Yes. $200 worth of DLC for Rock Band 4. On either Xbox One or PS4, you get to pick the platform. It's bonkers. Yeah, Harmonix. Totally Harmonix is awesome to us. They have been awesome to us and are going whole hog with this contest. So again, 
the SML podcast at gmail.com to send in your entries. If you want all the rules, go to joecam.net. It is pinned. It is the top entry on the page. Get all the details there. Uh, yeah, enter. And then I heard, I heard that we have, uh, another prize to enter in today. Uh, maze dude, you were going to chip something in, weren't you? Well, American Pixels is going to have not only the digital, but actual CDs as well. And I'm getting a bunch of these made. So yeah, I'll chip in a CD. But there you go. If you can't afford to kickstart the album, you might not have to because you could win a copy. But you should probably kickstart the album instead. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you absolutely. Should. <laughs> because the, there's the, still 23 the point is, days. The point is you can get the extra copy to give to a friend. Yeah, there's 23 days left in the Kickstarter, but less than a week for the contest. So if you don't win, you better fucking kickstart the project. God damn it. You know, on those rare cases where I got two copies of an album, I just kept the one wrapped in plastic. Just, you know, it could be yeah. valuable someday. Yeah, yeah. I should start doing that, actually. I've, I've bought I multiple bunch of stuff CDs in plastic. before. Yeah. I'm just looking oh, yeah. at my shelf right now. I got Mega Man, Shine Sparkers, Heroes vs. Villains, Metroid Arrange, all in plastic. Nice. I still nice. have a a green cover time and space seal. <laughs> I, I still have some Project Majestic mix sealed. Nice. S- silver edition. I my gold one I opened, but Damn, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that takes you far far back, huh? Yeah. That is cool. Yeah, I what, was it the square dance I had Ale Sean sign, and he's like, I signed this even though I'm not on it. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Something goofy. But yeah, there's uh, there's all the contest info. What do you, what do you think, Maze Dude? Are you going to enter? I, I feel like I want to now. Actually, it's the pit boy that makes me feel like, oh, I got to enter. Right, just for dude? The chance, just, so just for the things. chance to win that. There is so much good stuff. It doesn't matter what console you own. As long as you have something current, you're going to get something good. Yeah. Gonna happen. Definitely. Hang on. Uh, my cat is meowing like crazy at the window. I gotta get let her in. Hang nice. On. I will be right back. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is bananas with how much shit is in this contest, and we are announcing a winner next week on the show. Next week. Are you ready to pick a winner, Chris? <sighs> sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I am. There's going to be so many things to go through. There, there are. Let me let me see right now. We have because I remember. I remember the last time when you just like when we were all still doing it in the same room and you printed out like fucking five pages worth of shit. Where I'm like, oh <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is the. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> we have so far. We have 26 with entries, and I'm sure most of them have plenty of multiples. I'm sure there are. Oh, uh, no. But again, I now. haven't read any of these emails, so I don't know. Oh, we're going to go into it completely blind. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. It's fair. Yep. I, I don't want to have any kind of advantage over seeing any of the entries before other people, so we are going to go in blind. Make sure okay, you have a notepad with you next week so you could write down some of your favorite entries. Twitch chat. Indeed. Twitch chat. I'll just type them in there. So, uh, b- before we tackle the the rest of the reviews, do you want to go over news for the week? Uh, why don't we finish up the reviews and then we'll just do all the news at the end. Alrighty. Next game to talk about is called Fru. F R U. Developed and published by Through Games. It releases July thirteenth, so it's out this week for fourteen ninety nine. This is. Believe it or not, a it's Connect, Connect game. game. Right? Yes. Yeah. It has been getting an insane amount of coverage lately. Uh, this game has been in the works for years. Before Microsoft ever said, hey, we're going to kind of drop the whole Connect thing, it's been in the works and it Dude, shows. What the, f- what the fuck? Yo, I'm just lo- like, I'm looking at the. Uh... I'm I'm looking at the trailer right now, and this is amazing. What the f- dude? This is blowing my mind right now. It is. Why did they do this sooner? It is a puzzle platformer where you have to get from one side of the screen to the other, 
And if there's no platforms there that you can jump on because you're, you are still using a controller to move your character, uh, you need to stand in that open area and see if there's a platform because your body, your silhouette is basically a different dimension in the game. This is fucking sweet, dude. What? Like, uh, this is fantastic. See, yeah. th- and everybody wants to make fun of the fact that like, we're constantly praising the connect, but this looks amazing. This looks great. The, the game has been getting absurd reviews lately. I think Destructoid gave it like a 9.5. Whoa. Yeah. Like, it's not just, hey, this is a good game for connect. No, they're like, this is a good game. Wow, this, dude, this it, is fantastic. It is incredibly unique. It is just incredibly well made. The the connect detection is fantastic and it it can require some pretty crazy positions to get working. <laughs> like I've I've had a a foot up on the couch because I'm too fat to just hold it up. Uh propped up while leaning over with an arm up, another arm pointed down, just so I could have like the right areas of the screen oh my God. switched over. Because it's it's not just as easy as stand here, make a platform appear, and jump over. Uh, as the game goes on, they throw in some different elements. Uh, the one stage, wherever you are, is water. Oh yeah, I see that. So Wait, you, so how do you control? How do you control the person? Is with it the, auto run? with the analog stick, you're still using the controller. Oh, so you're just holding on to the controller in one hand? Yes. Oh, oh, there, that's sweet. All the only controls are move and jump. You can move with either of the analog sticks, and you can jump with the triggers. So you can oh, hold the controller dude, one handed. Cool. Yeah. Uh, another stage or another world. They have uh, orbs that you have to be touching to either power up floors or power up platforms that move left and right. Some of them will make walls come out so that to create platforms. And it's all about knowing which ones you have to touch, knowing if they affect the the normal world or the alternate world, I guess is the easiest way to put it. It's it is just incredibly incredibly well done, and if you own a Connect, you owe it to yourself to pick the. I think I sent out a tweet that I said if you own a Connect and you don't buy Fru, I don't know if we could be friends. Yeah, right, man. <laughs> like this is a no no word to lie. I never thought that I would actually be in a position to say, "Wow, I really this game makes me want to get a Connect." You know what I mean? Like, there's not too many games. There are not too many games that can actually accomplish that. But I feel like this is absolutely worth it. If this came out earlier, or if more people were still on board with the Connect, how many amazing games like this could we have seen, or could we still possibly see? Hey, it's still possible. Like, who's to say? I mean, who's to say that uh, this doesn't become a franchise? Because yeah. this is absolutely like, absolutely franchisable in my opinion. Like this is holy shit, man. This is cool. I mean, I do have one small gripe with the game. Okay. And no, it's not that I'm fat, and it's hard to do. Uh, okay. The game is fairly short. There, okay. there's an achievement in the game to beat it in forty minutes. So the length of the game may may get some it may turn some people off, but keep in mind you're not going to do that forty minutes in your try. That's going to be something where you learn all the stages, you figure out what you got to do. Uh, you try and do it as fast, like it becomes a speed run. Yeah, because it's yeah, but technically, I guess that would make it. It makes it more of an active connect game, though, because now you're like, all right, I'm going to play this again just so that I can get better times and you're doing all these complex like because let's be honest some of these movements are not easy not at all um, so you know you're just ripping through these really complex movements like 
Yeah, I, I think it absolutely could be like almost a workout in disguise <laughs> that like, is just a, a covered up under an insanely good game. Like, yeah, if you're coming up this week, I want you to try the game up here. So okay. You can talk about it next week. It is just yeah. Um, my my plan is actually I'm 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 gonna try and come up Thursday. Yeah. Um, I have a show I have a show tomorrow. I want to come up on a day where I can actually like get as much accomplished as I can. So. I'm gonna try Thursday. Nice, but, but yeah, yeah, I would. I really would like. I mean, like, granted, I have a hernia right now, so I'm probably not gonna be moving too well. <laughs> but I still want to try it. Like, itch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> Dude, this sucks, man. I, I like having to play on top of this. Ugh. Yeah. Needless to say, if you have a Connect, Fruit is an absolute must buy. This is this justifies owning a Connect. I would borderline say this is a reason to get a Connect because I'm sure Connects are pretty cheap now. And depending on where you go, I get. Right. I mean, like we we've already talked about how good the virtual air guitar games are with Connect, and mm-hmm. this is in like a league of its own because it's not just a move to play kind of thing. This mixes Connect with a hardcore gaming experience, and while it's I guess it's not like super hardcore, like, oh, it's not a shooter or anything. It's still mixing the controller and the connect in a unique and fun way that just feels right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This is definitely like, this is what the connect was made for. These are, this is, this is legitimately why the connect exists. Yeah. But yeah, next game is called Pharaonic or Pharaonic. I one of them. Uh, it is developed and published by Milkstone Studios. It released July 13th on the Xbox One. It is already out now for the PS4. It is $15.99. This is a 2D hack and slash uh, adventure action adventure game where you are a a pharaoh or you're not a pharaoh. You're an it takes place in Egyptian times and you are a prisoner and you are freed by a mystical woman to to help uh overthrow the the evil ruler and take back the the or the just and the good and all that other stuff. Uh the big draw here is the actual gameplay. It is a mix of action RPG all on a 2D plane which is is pretty neat. It, it it likes to draw comparisons to Dark Souls because it is not a game where you just button mat. Yeah, I could see it, it it does look very like the combat's very Dark Soulsy actually. It is it is a very slow-paced battle system. Uh you have a, a heavy attack, a light attack, a dodge, a parry and a block. And you'll eventually get like a magic backpack that can help you out. But the main draw with this game is that it is fucking hard. Like it is, I think even in the the Xbox description, it mentions that it is a brutally unforgiving game. It looks gorgeous, actually. Yeah, it's it for looks me, really good. The visuals are nice. Plane, yeah. I like that it it is a 3D game. It just plays on a 2D plane. Like, oh, excuse me. Some of the areas uh, you'll be able to like walk backward into a different plane. And it, mm-hmm. you know, when you walk backwards, it turns it so that it is once again on a 2D plane. So it is definitely a 3D world. All the action just takes place on a 2D plane. Like I said, the 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 combat is. You need to be patient and you need to take your time because if you rush in there just hacking and slashing, you are going to die a lot. And I have died a lot despite being patient. Uh, As fun as the combat is, there are times where it just feels like blatantly unfair. Okay. Like, it, it seems like Everything is based on stamina, like Dark Souls. Every attack that you do, every dodge that you do, uses up stamina. And depending on the you know the the weapons that you have equipped, that will affect your stamina. If you have uh, armor on, the heavier armor 
reduces your stamina. So you need okay. you need to yeah, find a sense. good balance between having stamina, or as Rampage Jackson Jackson says, stamina, anima, stamina. Have you ever watched him stream? By the way, no. Him playing UFC is hilarious because he's like stamina, stamina, stamina. Come on, motherfucker, stamina. And it's never yeah. stamina; it's always stamina. Interesting. But it, it it sometimes feels like the enemies have more stamina, 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 stamina. than you could possibly ever hope for. Like they could seemingly block forever sometimes, or in the time it takes you to like do two, like a light and then a heavy attack, they'll bust out three heavy attacks chained together. And even if you roll and dodge, they'll like turn around mid attack and hit. Interesting. Like, now this looks this looks cool. Like uh, on the surface, if you just look at the the um, the screenshots and stuff, it looks like it's literally just gonna be like side scrolling, whatever. But I'm I'm looking at like the first few minutes of the gameplay and stuff, and yeah, like how you said, going into different parts of the map, and it it does feel a lot more almost free roamish because of the way that the maps are set up, um, but. Obviously, all the actions taking place on a 2D plane. It's neat. I, I like it. I, yeah. I think it's really cool. And they they are fairly open maps. There's different branches and paths that you can go down. Uh, there's a lot to explore. It just whether or not you want this game is going to come down to the battle system and how patient you are. As it stands, I'm going to give it a try. It just because I know the difficulty can and will turn people off. I think there's going to be a lot of people who look at the visuals and be like, "Oh, well, this is a." a fun looking, you know, casual action RPG kind of game. No, it will fuck your hey, no. shit up. Like big time, it will wreck you. Yeah, it's, it definitely look it, it has a Dark Souls vibe, like a heavy Dark Souls vibe. Um and just like Dark Souls, dying has a a hefty penalty where uh I think when I died, I was like most of the way to a new level, and when I died, I lost like half of that level's experience. Ooh. If you get back to where you died, your quote unquote your memories are there. You can pick it up and get that experience back. But if you die on the way there, not only is that first one gone, but you lose more experience. <laughs> well, I just I just watched this guy get housed like the physics are fantastic <laughs> he just got he got clubbed right in the back of the head and just yeah that was that was satisfying that yeah, was funny the, <laughs> the game is enjoyable but the difficulty can definitely be frustrating and like i said some of them they just it just felt unfair some of the times i died like some of the the bigger enemies they hit so like i i shouldn't be hit twice at full health and die you gotta not get hit. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> well, it's not supposed to be easy. Oh, I know. I I very much know. But yeah, if you can handle the difficulty, I think you'll enjoy the game. Overall, I'm gonna give it a try. It. Fair. Yeah, it's definitely not for everybody. Whereas most of the other games that we covered today are for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next game is called Super Mutant Alien Assault, developed by Cybernate, published by Surprise Attack Games. Uh, it is out now, released July 12th for $9.99. This is a 2D uh, shooter, pixel, pixel graphics. Uh, it is all randomized. The levels, the objectives are random each time you play. Uh you spawn in an area, and depending on what you do, you have to either transport things from one area to another, till you move them all, and then you have to fight off the rest of the enemies that are coming at you. Uh, you have to stop some, like, energy barrel things from overcharging, so you just run up to them and hit a button and it cools it down. And others are just survival, where you have to survive all the enemies that come at you. If you take too long on the stages there's like a pulsing energy station thing every now and then it'll emit like a green wave across the stage it doesn't hurt you but it powers up your enemies 
Oh. Now, if you take too long to kill enemies, it just gets harder. That's interesting. And the enemies get stronger. Uh, uh-huh. There are, you know, depending on the stage, there might be a, a station with bombs, a station with guns. Every now and then you'll see a station with health that slowly recharges. Guns clearly have limited ammo. Uh, the, the explosives, you usually only get five of them. Once it's out, you know, you have to ration them so that you aren't out of ammo and explosives before the stations recharge. Okay. And every, oh, wow. every time, uh, the station will give you different equipment. So if you get, like, an AK the first time, the next time you go back, it might give you a shotgun or a sniper rifle. Cool. Or a fucking lightsaber. <laughs> cool. Uh, there are dozens of different weapons in the game, and as you play more, you unlock different equipment and also eventually unlock new equipment that you could start the game with. Uh, Like, when you start fresh, you can choose one item, whether it be, like, a sidearm, like a pistol, or there's, like, an attack donut that you can throw at things. I saw that, yeah. Uh, You can get, like, a dodge move or a double jump, depending on what you've unlocked. You could pick one thing to start the game with. And can I just can I just there. say something about these uh, these pixel graphics because they look great. They do. The game is gorgeous. Like the animations are really cool. Like the the characters are really really interesting. It is it is fast paced. It is satisfying action. The shooting. It's really satisfying game. It is fairly short overall. Okay. Like. On paper, it is short. There's three stages, then a boss, three stages, then a boss, three stages, then a boss. The end. Okay. Well, yeah, but, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it is, it's kind of roguelike-esque though, right? So yes. it promotes replayability, yes? Yes. There is. There are multiple difficulties. To unlock the next difficulty, you need to do the entire game without dying. Okay. You have to do all 12 stages without dying, which might seem easy, but it is definitely not. <laughs> uh, okay. I have yet to, to unlock the second difficulty because I'm a scrub. Sucks at video games. Uh, <laughs> I, I have beat the game. I've beaten all three of the different bosses. I just haven't done it start to finish. I've gotten like to the third boss and then died on him. Sucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I the could, game does I have local co-op. Game yeah, has local yeah, I saw co-op. That. Uh, so you can team up, and it also has an endless mode where you just you you can Go pick forever. Yeah, a bunch of different starting equipment, not just one item, but like you could pick a starting sidearm, a starting ability, a starting boost. And you just go as far as you can. The pro the the not the problem, but the the twist with that is you only have two hearts of health. Where in normal difficulty you have five. Some enemies might only hit you for half a damage. Interesting. So, uh, I'm going to assume that the the higher difficulties give you less starting health. Like that wouldn't make sense. Uh, the game is ridiculously addictive. There's always that thought of one more run, one more run. Fuck it, one more run. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love games like that. And just as you unlock more and more stuff, it's fun to just see what fun, crazy weapon you're going to get next or what kind of fun explosive you're going to get next. Yeah, 10 bucks. I think it's another buy. It's a really cool game. Cool. One final game to talk about. One more. This one is called Tumblestone. Developed and published by the Quantum Quantum Astrophysicists Guild. Uh, released July 12th on the PS4, the Vita, the Wii U, and the st- and on Steam for $24.99. It is going to release on the Xbox One July 16th as part of Games with Gold. Okay. So there's kind of two, two tales to this game, depending on if you're getting it on Xbox or on the other platforms, uh, because that price tag is going to be an issue for some people. First off, the game is a puzzle game. It is 
a new puzzle game. Like it's not just another spin on Tetris or another spin on like bust a move where you're matching bubbles. Uh, there are an assortment of different colored blocks coming down from the ceiling and you have to match three of them. You can move left, right, and you can only pick the ones that are available like on the surface and you have to match three of the same color and then three of the same color and then three of the same. And you have to whittle it down until you get rid of all the blocks, which clearly it sounds very easy. But because it's a puzzle game, you have to make sure that you are going in the proper order. If you make a mistake, you got to start over. Oh, they start you over from the beginning of that stage. Yes. Damn. Like the, the single player mode, they have uh, a long campaign with, God, I think eight or nine different worlds, and each one has like nearly 30 stages. So the actual campaign is huge. Uh, they also have an arcade mode, which has a uh, puzzle mode where you basically just do like a section of puzzle and then a new one pops up and then a new one, just endless puzzles. They have an endless mode where the, the blocks just continually keep coming down. Uh, and then there's another mode. I forget the name of it, but depending after so many moves, the stage drops down and then it drops down. Uh, the big thing is those arcade modes will not be available out of the gate. On the Xbox One. Um, so it's so they're pretty much just giving you the the multiplayer aspect of it for the games with gold, and that's it. For games with gold, you're getting the single player campaign. Okay. So you're getting the full campaign, and then you can have like minute long trials of the different arcade modes. The arcade bundle will be sold separately for four ninety nine, so it's not that big of a price difference. Like it's okay. not that that huge of an addition, and the arcade modes are really fun. I think if you're getting the game free with gold, the extra five bucks is totally worth it for the three modes and how much there is to do. The campaign itself is very long, very fun. I like the fact that it is a new puzzle game yeah it's not really up on them yeah right? it's not just a twist on something that's that, like i can't compare this to any other puzzle games because it's like its own new concept yeah i i'm trying to think like how it was, oh it's kind of like this but you do that it's it's just it's its own thing it's a match three but it's not really a match three like it's not like Bejeweled where you just move a gem and line three up and they disappear. You're, it's different. It is cool. It is it is really fun. I think twenty four ninety nine might be a bit much for most people for a puzzle game. Xbox One gamers getting the game free and then five bucks for the arcade modes is a no brainer. Buy it. Okay. Steam they're going to have their own different option. You can either get the full game for 25 bucks, or you can get a $9.99 multiplayer starter pack, which is just the multiplayer mode in the game. Local yeah. and online. And then from there, you can pay $14.99 to upgrade to the full game. So it's, okay. you, know, you, okay. you can pay 10 bucks to kind of get a feel of the game play multiplayer and then see if you want to make the leap into you know the full game with the campaign and the arcade mode okay i mean uh, it's a little unorthodox but sure and it's it's options for steam game i think the 25 bucks i'm it's a try it because the game is a blast it's in, it's great to see a new puzzle game like, I can't stress how cool it is to just see a new, an actual new puzzle game. Just Tetris. Right. 
Yeah, uh, there yeah. isn't too many. So Game, Games with Gold, this is absolutely one that you should grab on the 16th. I mean, it's going to be free. And then the five bucks for the arcade modes, if you're enjoying the campaign, it's worth dropping the five bucks for sure. The arcade mode. So, yeah, cool. that's why I said it's kind of like a tale of two games where the twenty four ninety nine dollars full package is a try it. And the games with gold, clearly it's free, so you're you should get it no matter what. But the five bucks for the arcade modes is a absolute cool. But yeah, awesome week of games, awesome, awesome lineup of games. Why don't we why don't we get to the news then? The news I feel bad because like I've been bumping games from week to week and I had a bump two to next. Because I haven't had time to play them. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it's fair. It's it's not like I think I think they'll appreciate the fact that you're not just going into them like half cocked and only like playing them for like twenty minutes and being like, yeah, man, I got this. Yeah, like, it's, it's okay. It's, it's- yeah, I want to be fair to the game. So apologies to the games that we should have covered this week, but I just haven't because I'm only one man. Yeah, well, I don't I'm, have my, happy my as schedule- backup anymore. Yeah, my my schedule sucks too much to try and get games in right now. So uh, until uh, until well, the summer's you're over, you're like, gonna have one for next week. Yeah, what is it? Oh, yeah, after. Ooh. So uh, yeah, news for the week: uh, Rock Band DLC this week. Brian Setzer, oh. Rock This Town. Right. Fuck yeah. Then a uh, Third Eye Blind Jumper, which is the actual original master recording. And not the re-record that was on Rock Band Network. I play that every week. <laughs> this this actually brings up an interesting subject with Rock Band. Is recently they have been doing more weeks when they don't have the multi tracks. Okay, they so don't. it's literally just single songs. Well, they they have like they do whatever technology they have to split up the instruments as best as possible, but you're still going to have weirdness in the fu- like, you know, if if you miss a guitar note, like half the vocals might drop out too. A lot of people like they Weird. they never did this before. A lot of people think that because they eased up on this stance is why we're getting so many songs that we. People are like, oh, yeah, we should have had that in Rock Band 2. Uh, I, I, uh, I think we're getting a lot, of, a lot more songs that we've always wanted because they've eaten up their stance. Oh, must be the pure Master Files. Stuff like that. Okay, but what, is it annoying enough to warrant not wanting to do them? Or, it, like, is it... I don't have a problem with them. I, I just know some people are like, man, I wish they would at least let us know if it's if it's like not the full master files or something. And someone noticed on the, the preview video for this week is for Third Eye Blind, they like had the drum solo section where you can hear the drums, like the person hitting the drums over the drums in the song. So it didn't completely mute out the drum or something to that. It it was just it was in a way that you can tell that it wasn't full multi track files. Okay. Well, that's kinda weird. But hey, as long as as long as that means we could get more cool songs, fucking bring it on. Yeah, I think ultimately that's how I feel about it too. People are like, well, we we already have to deal with only two songs a week and now not getting the full master tracks. This is stupid. I'd rather have two songs a week than no songs a week. (laughs) Also true. Yeah. uh, No Man's Sky, which is coming out in August, the game with 18 quintillion planets, has gone gold. And believe it or not... It's gold, yeah. It is ready. It is being pressed and manufactured, so the game is ready. And believe it or not, it only takes up six gig of data on a PS4 disc. <clears throat> um, let me let me remind you. Have you ever looked at the file size of Minecraft? No, I'm sure it's, it's really, really small. small. It's insanely small. 
Yeah, but for a game that's supposedly endless to only take up six gig, I think is pretty... Of course, it's because it's procedurally well, generated. It, I was going to say, it's probably procedurally generated. Is it server-based or is it just no. like... I, I so don't... It, it I can think, be local. I believe so, yes. And they said mo- like a big chunk of that six gig is audio. <laughs> So wait, wait, what? <laughs> like, like that six gig of data. A lot of that is audio files for the game. That's weird. Yeah. So yeah, ah. massive game, tiny size. So good stuff there. Uh, Batman Return to Arkham is now looking like it might not hit until November at the earliest. And it might not even be until next year. And the biggest reason is allegedly performance issues with the frame rate being mentioned specifically. Really? We're going to do this again? Really? So who knows if, uh, if Return to Arkham is going to show up or even be good. Maybe it shouldn't show up. If they're having this many problems all of the time, maybe they should just be like, yo... Maybe we should do this from the ground up. Well, obviously, we can't work on you know what we did before because it's not stable enough. So why don't why or don't or maybe just... get Rocksteady to do it themselves instead of handing it out to some Chinese port company? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Just maybe that would be a good a good idea. But what you know? And that's not a slight. Like the team handling it is based in China. Oh no, or, I know that. I know that. Just just for people listening. <laughs> Uh, speaking of frame rate issues, Glitchdom Battle Mage has been patched on the Xbox One and the PS4 to fix frame rate issues. Thankfully, uh, the game has been dropped to 900p on both consoles, so it is no longer a 1080p game. Uh, Digital Foundry put the game through its paces again after the patch. And they found that the frame rate has been locked at 30 on the Xbox One with only very, very minor drops into the high 20s. So the game is basically fixed on the Xbox One frame rate. Good. The PS4 has an unlocked frame rate, which means it can approach 60, but can also dip much lower than the Xbox One. Like, they they found it going into the low 20s. And because of the drastic difference from, like, 59 to 21, they actually found it harder to play than the Xbox One version. Uh, uh, Sucks to be them. Yeah. Uh, Load times have been improved, but they're still long as hell. But, you know, when you shave off 90 seconds to a load time... That's an improvement. So they're yeah. no longer yeah, three minute good. load times. They're like minute and a half. Yeah, well, Digital, Foundry, Digital Foundry recommends trying the game out on Xbox One, but still might be worth holding off. They think if they locked it to 30, it might be. Uh, from what I've heard, the brightness issues in the Xbox One hasn't been fixed, but I haven't verified it myself. I'm I'm not positive on that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I I hope it gets taken care of because I really wanted to play it, but it was so goddamn dark. <laughs> well, you know, fingers crossed it'll it'll uh it'll get sorted out. Yeah, I do love the fact that when the game came out and it was having so many issues, I tried returning it to Amazon and they're like, Yeah, we'll send you a prepaid envelope to mail it back, and they never did. And now it's like 14 bucks on Amazon. Huh. Uh, Manic, we are talking about Lictum Battle Mage. Which has been Lictum. massively improved, but still not completely perfect. It's better than it was. So that's, that's definitely good news, at least. It's good to see Maximum Games is working on it. Yeah, it definitely needed, um, it definitely needed some love, so that's good. And, and apparently... Apparently, their other game, uh, Alakine's Gun, got a recent patch as well, but I don't know any of the details. Yes, Lick the Battle Mate. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Next bit of news, Rocket League is going to be adding a crate system. Oh, no. No, don't do it to me. No. <laughs> More details will be revealed in August. 
There will be no gameplay advantages at all. It will be strictly cosmetic, and the the whole system can be hidden with an option, so you won't even see it. It will not affect the current item drop system or affect any future updates, and the crates cannot be sold on Steam Marketplace. Um, but they're probably going to be like the ones in Overwatch, and I've already have I already have a problem with Overwatch. I've I've already spent enough. Don't do it to me, Rocket League. You're gonna make me spend money. <laughs> Don't do it. That's why you Don't just hide it. the option and. I'm going to have to. It's going to take every fiber of my being to uncheck that box. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I forgot it's to mention suck. this since we talked about the, the performance issues with Lictum being fixed. Uh, last week when we reviewed Ethan Meteor Hunter and Dex, I mentioned stuttering and frame rate issues and screen tearing that I had between those two games. Mm-hmm. said I would give an update after the most recent dashboard update. I saw minor improvements on decks, but there was still stuttering and screen tearing, and I didn't really see any kind of change on Ethan Meteor Hunter. So it looks like they, I don't know, maybe they need to be patched. Maybe. But I said I would provide an update on who, on those two, so there's the update. It didn't really change much. Still fun games. Uh, you all right, Ian? You're re- you're honestly surprised that I bought loot boxes. Uh, but seriously, you're surprised. Come on. Oh, I think anybody anybody that's legitimate. I'm still playing Overwatch. Like at that, like literally the only games that I play anymore. It's Overwatch, Diablo, Hearthstone, and like I, every once in a while I'll pick up something else. But that's pretty <laughs> much that's my that's my rotation. Like it's those it's those three games mostly. Not surprised, just disappoint. Don't you don't you put don't you pull that shit on me? What are you, my mother? Anyway, I have one more tiny bit of news. Uh, looks like Nintendo shares are skyrocketing. <laughs> oh, gee, you think? <laughs> Nintendo shares are o- up over twenty five percent since the release of Pokemon Go. Uh, it reportedly has over seven and a half million downloads across iOS and Android. And uh, on iOS alone, it makes 1.6 million daily. It's surpassed Twitter. Oh, and all that is for US only. It doesn't account any other read. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the fact that it's still technically not available in the App Store for android quote unquote for the u.s i thought it was now you can download the apk but it's not officially on this on the android store (laughs) you could just download the file run it and play the game but you're not supposed to i have no idea what my cats are doing but i'm hearing loud (laughs) click um I honestly, Ian, I don't, th- I don't see why you think that Pokemon Go is one of the most horribly designed games ever. It's basically Ingress with Pokemon. Like, that's that's all it is. It's a much more accessible version of Ingress. At least that's what I believe it to be. So I don't know why Ian wanted that. No. Well, now it's up. So there you go. But yeah, uh, that's all the news I got. We we did the news. We did the reviews. I have no idea if Maze dudes. Uh, I did just come back, actually, but I'm taking uh, off pretty quick. Yeah, we're, we're about to wrap up any, anyways. So. I was curious if there's going to be any music. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we're going to play something this, this guy called Maze Dude. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, I figure we're going to play the Diablo song you hooked us up with. We're going to play that, uh, I don't have the the name of it on me, that circus one. Put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. I think I'll toss <laughs> Come Back on there. I don't know, we'll, we'll toss in a couple more songs. I figure we could do like five songs of Maze Dude. Neat. Well, I may take off during that, but I hope you guys enjoy, and I'm curious to no, we, know we what We don't you guys actually think. play it during just, the show. We just edit oh, it we in splice them in. Ah, gotcha. Never mind then. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I could play it now. 
No, no, just whenever you splice it, I'm curious what you guys think and what people think. That's all. So I heard Diablo, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. It, it is good stuff. So I am very excited for American Pixels. And Maze Dude, thank you so much for joining us. I yeah, wish you all the luck in the world with the 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 Kickstarter, and I hope everything goes well for you. And keep kicking ass, dude. Yeah, I intend to. Thank you for the support, and uh, thanks for having me tonight. And we'll talk to you guys soon. And join our contest. Yeah, I, I'm going to give that a lot, a lot of shit. I see that. <laughs> it's a lot of shit. I'll change it to someone must listen. And there you go. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Someone picture, must listen. Just picture a guy in a chair tied up with a radio next to him. Like, you must listen to this. Listen, you son of a bitch. No choice. That, so, uh, that actually, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I should edit that out so Maze Dude could send in that as his entry. I really I like that. You better email that in like right now before someone else takes that suggestion. <laughs> Because we're we and we like, stream I'm gonna that. Forget that it was from him. Come on, like <laughs> you have a proof that it was uh, my idea. So yeah. So do either <laughs> of you have anything else to talk about, or are, are we good to to wrap this show up? I think we, we are good, good to wrap this up. We're good. Right, so Maze Dude, why don't you do us the honors? How about you give us some final words to end the episode? Um, I wasn't really prepared for that. No one. Nobody is. ever is. That's the point. Okay. Remember, you're making memories. Don't do something stupid and then live with that memory for the rest of your life. How's that?
need my baby back. I love the way she wants me near. I need my baby back. The way she shattered all my fears. I need her in my life. I need to take back what I've done. I want to fix it all. I want to start again. Come back to me. Come back to me. We can start. Yeah.